Hello and welcome back to another video on the Quansheng UVK5 and in this video I'm going to try and explain all the functions of the main menu. So since the last video I've updated the firmware to EG Zuma version 0.20 as you can see briefly on the screen there and we're going to run through all the uh, the main menu uh, settings. So first uh, menu when you press menu you'll see that we're on menu one of 60 so 60 options in the menu the first one is the step so we can change the uh, the step so i've currently got it set on uh, 6.25 kilohertz but if i want to change that press the menu button again so we just get step and now we can use the up and down buttons to either decrease um, or we can increase you see on uh, version two uh, version 0 0.20 we can actually go right down to 0 0.1 kilohertz steps uh, we're going to put that back to where I had it on uh, 6.25 kilohertz so we'll press menu again so that's on back to menu number one oddly the uh, up and down are the wrong way around so if you press up it takes you to the top of the menu to 60 so if we press down it will take you to one, press down again, it will take you to menu number two. So the second menu uh, is the transmit power. Uh, in this, another video I'll try and uh, do some little power output tests and we'll see what the different uh, uh, powers like on different bands. But uh, again, press menu, goes into TX power and we can just select between high, mid and low. And like I say, we'll do some further tests in another video as to what the uh, high, mid and low power outputs actually are on uh, on different bands. Uh, back out to uh, the main menu again, we'll press the down key, uh, gives us menu 3, which is the RX DCS. So the RX DCS is the digital coded squelch, so it's a little bit like the CTCSS, which is in the following menu, um, but the digital coded squelch you can select between obviously various different digital codes. Um, Obviously, I'm going to leave that switched off on mine. It's only really useful if you're going to have several radios set up and you want to be able to call individual radios, uh, a bit like with the CTCSS. This uses a digital format, whereas the uh, the CTCSS obviously uses uh, coded uh, tone squelch. So um, we'll go down to the next one. Uh, menu four is your receive CTCSS, sorry, CTCS, uh, and you can press again. Uh, and you can choose between the various uh, CTCS tones. Again, for the frequency one at the moment, I'm just going to leave that switched off. So there you receive ones. Uh, menu 5 is the transmit. Uh, DCS, uh, same again. Menu 6 is your transmit CTCS, if you're going to use that. So menu 7 is the transmit directional offset. So I'm going to press menu again. At the moment it's switched off because we're on a simplex frequency but if i scroll up i can uh, put the offset frequency above the frequency that we're currently on uh, if i scroll up again you see you get a little negative symbol so that's uh, below the, the offset will be below the frequency that we're currently on uh, that's if you want to use repeaters obviously so if uh, if i come out of this we'll put it back to off because i'm on a simplex frequency i'm going to press menu and then we're going to press the exit button to take us back to the main screen. You can see I've got my local repeater uh, frequency in there. So I'm going to press the A and B button to swap us over. So you'll see this one, there'll be an offset on it. So if I press menu, you can see it's plus because uh, the, the transmit of the frequency, the input of the repeater is above the output of the repeater. Um, and we can see what the offset is on the next menu. So if I scroll down to... Uh, TX offset you can see that the um, for the repeater the offset is 1.6 megahertz and it's going to transmit at plus 1.6 megahertz hopefully that makes sense for repeater operations that's menu number eight so we'll come out of that um, press the down to give us the next one so menu number nine is the uh, selection between wide and narrow. So we're currently on narrow. Again, simply press and you can swap between narrow and wide uh, band operation. Menu number 10 is a scrambler. So if, uh, if you've got two identical radios, you can switch the scrambler option on. Uh, you press menu uh, and you can choose your different uh, 
scrambler options as different um, hertz you can put in there. So I'm just going to leave that switched off. Menu 11 then is the uh, busy channel lockout or busy CL. So I leave that switched off. If you have that switched on, what that does is that stops you from transmitting whilst the radio is receiving. So if the green light's on basically and the radio is busy and it's receiving something, it won't let you transmit. Again, that's no good if you're trying to use a repeater because uh, it won't let you transmit until the repeater's dropped out. So I'm going to leave that switched off. Menu 12 is the compander or expander. Um, so we can select whether you want that uh, on transmit, RX, or TX and RX, or you just want it switched off. Menu 13 is the demodulator. So we can uh, select between FM mode, um, upper sideband, and AM. Obviously, all that's doing is uh, on, on this version is receiving. You can transmit on, on FM. Uh, but it just allows you to receive on AM or or sync or upper sideband. So menu 14 is where you add channels to your scan list. So you've got two scan lists. You've got uh, scan list one and scan list two. So if I just come out, you'll see I've got nothing at the moment added to either of the scan lists. So if I want to add the local repeater to scan list one, I'll press menu and uh, I'm going to change this to on. So press menu come out of that you can now see there's a little one just here so that means that uh, that repeater has been added to scan list one so when I scan through that's in the list there I can also add it to scan list two if I want to so again if I press menu and then go down to uh, menu 15 I can also add it to the second list as well so we'll change that to, to on as well there we go and then we'll come out of the menu by pressing exit you'll now see there's a little one and a little roman numerals two as well which shows that that particular memory channel has been added to to both scan lists uh, channel save if you look at my previous video we went through uh, how to add channels and how to save channels you can delete channels in menu number 17 uh, menu number 18 Again, if you look at my previous video, uh, it uh, shows how to add channels uh, using this menu system. So I'll just show you what they do, but we're not actually going to go into uh, how to do it. So menu 19 is the scan list. So you can tell the radio what you want it to scan. So if you've got on all, if you've got all 200 um, memory channels programmed up, and none of them are in scan lists, but you want to scan all 200 channels, if you select all, it will scan through everything. So I've currently got it set on all. If I press exit and exit again, and then we'll, we'll let it scan through. So I'm going to press the uh, the button I've got assigned for scan. You can see that not all of these are added into the uh, the scan list. There, a couple are on both scan lists, and then that'll disappear, and some aren't in any list at all. Uh, once it gets through all the CB, there you get there's a few missing ones there. So that's currently run through all the. Uh, uh, the scan list so I'm going to exit the scan and then we're going to go to menu uh, and then we're going to go to uh, menu 19 again so I'm going to change that so when I press the scan button I'm going to change it so that I only want it to scan things that are in list one so I'll press menu again now if I press exit and I press uh, press the scan button um, it's only scanning through uh, things that are in the uh, in the menu at the moment so that's the scan lists um, the scan list one is, the, is menu 20 so again you can uh, you can assign which ones are um, set to uh, scan list one uh, same with the following menu so if I come down to menu 21 uh, again it's exactly the same you can select uh, which channels you want to be set into uh, your second scan list Menu 22 then, that's the uh, scan resume mode. So basically you can tell it when you want it to scan and when you don't want it to scan or what you want it to do. So if it's on carrier, um, as soon as the, the carrier's dropped, it will carry on scanning. Uh, if we set it to timeout, then it will leave a five second gap after the uh, carrier's dropped, which is handy if you listen to, say, a simplex 
um, frequency and uh, you're waiting for the second person to respond then you, don't, you might not want it to, to carry on uh, scanning so you can use uh, use the timeout or alternatively um, you can get it to stop so but as soon as it uh, receives a signal it just stops on that frequency until you ask it to do something else so menu 23 then that is where you assign the side button so uh, function button one so short press of function button one at the moment I've got that to do monitor so if I come out of that uh, if I press function button one which is that one you'll hear it opens the squelch up so that's what uh, I've currently got that set up but you can select through the different things you can have it monitor you can change the power level uh, you can use it to operate the, the flashlight on the top you can have it doing nothing um, you can switch the demodulation so you can use that to switch between AM FM and uh, upper sideband which you might find useful um, you can get it to switch between uh, VFO and memory mode um, or you can switch between VFOs uh, or you can use it as a, a keypad lock or if you really want to you can have it to uh, activate the FM radio uh, you can get to op operate the Vox or the voice uh, voice uh, activation uh, microphone you can set it for that if you want uh, or you can have it for scan uh, or we're back to monitor again so, so I've got uh, function one on mine set as monitor but you can set it how you like uh, so we'll come out of that one uh, long press I've got that long press as the uh, light I'll probably change that because I don't really use the light at all so um, we can select what we want for that so I might have that as the uh, demodulator switch so if we select that uh, that's what the long press will be so if I now long press the uh, the side button there you go, you can see we've switched it to AM, press it again, switch it to USB, and then we're back to FM again. So I've set the side button as my, my G modulator. So um, we can set uh, F2, which is this button here. I've currently got that to, to my scan, but again, you've got the same options. Um, and then function, oh sorry, menu 26 is your long press of the F2 button. Again, you've got the same options. You can use a program them however you like. 27 is uh, the menu button, long press. So again, you can choose what that does. If I long press mine, nothing happens. Uh, but again, you've got the different options for, for different things. You can use, uh, oh, we're not there. Menu, there we go. Again, you've got the same things. You'd have a flashlight, power, whatever you want. You can, uh, you can use that. Let's have that as uh, power settings. So... Uh, if I long press that now, we can change the uh, the power setting. So if we long press, there we go. You can see it change between medium power, high power, and uh, and low power there. So menu 28 is your key lock. So if you want to uh, set the key lock, you can have it on off. Uh, you can have it auto, so auto locks, or, uh, or back to off again. If we put the key lock on, on auto, we'll just see what happens. We'll come out of that. Uh, we'll leave it for a few seconds. It should uh, lock all the uh, the keys so you can't accidentally press something after a certain amount of time. And I'd imagine the little key will appear somewhere on the screen, hopefully. There you go. So there's a little, uh, you can just see it. There's a little padlock symbol appeared on the screen so the key locks on now so if you try pressing any of the buttons it'll uh, it'll tell you you've got to press the hash key to um, or press and hold the hash key to, to unlock so I'll press and hold the uh, the function or the hash key with a little padlock with a little key on it and the padlock should disappear there we go so that's now unlocked so I'm going to turn that off because I don't use the uh, the lock so we'll turn that off So function 29 then is the uh, uh, TX timer or your transmission out timer. So I've got mine set for five minutes so that it uh, gives you a nice long over. But again, you can change that anything from uh, anything from 30 seconds to 15 minutes is the uh, the options in there. So like I say, I leave that at, uh, at five minutes on the timeout timer for me. So menu 30 is your battery save option. Uh, so the instructions say that's a rate between active time and sleep time. So I've currently got that set on uh, 1 to 4. But you can change that between 1 to 4, 1 to 3, 
one to two, one to one, or you can just have it switched off. Not really sure how much difference that really makes. So scroll down to menu 30, and that is your mic gain. So I've got mine currently set on plus 12 dB, uh, but you can increase it to uh, uh, you can increase it to 15.1 decibels, or you can go right down to uh, 1.1 decibels. But for me, for my voice, uh, I found it to 12 decibels is about right. Menu 32 is where you select whether you want your mic bar on or off. Uh, so you, you'll notice when you transmit, there's a little bar that comes up. Um, you can have that switched on or off. I like having that switched on on mine. Menu 33 uh, is your channel display. So however you want that to, to be displayed. Uh, mine shows just the name at the moment, but you can have uh, you can have the name. You can have the name and the frequency. You could just have the frequency. Uh, or you could just have the channel number. So if we change that to, to name and frequency, press menu, and then we'll press uh, press exit to come out of that. You can see now it shows the uh, the channel name and the frequency itself on both the VFOs. And uh, we can change that to uh, just the frequency. Press menu, and then we'll exit again. There you go, so it shows just the frequencies. Or if you want, we could have just the channel number coming up. There you go, so it just shows the channel number. Not particularly useful. So we're going to set that back to uh, just the, we'll have that on uh, name and frequency. Menu 34 is your powering on message. So uh, you can either have it saying message, so uh, this one will say welcome when you first switch it on. Uh, we can get it to uh, display the voltage if you want, so we'll select that, uh, we'll exit that, we'll turn the radio off and then back on again, uh, and this time it will just show us the, uh, the battery voltage when it comes on. Um, we can get back to that menu quite quickly, if we want to dial it in, we press menu and then 34 so any of these menus you can just dial straight in press menu again uh, we'll change that to message menu exit we'll switch it on and off again there we go so we get the welcome and you get the uh, uh, the firmware uh, dis displayed on that welcome message uh, let's go back to the messages again so 34 on the menu and then We'll put it to full, and we'll select full, and then we'll exit that. And I'm not really quite sure what the point of this one is, but if we switch it on, now you'll see the screen is basically full of a, a blank screen initially. I think it may well be possible in the uh, in the programming software to, to put your own uh, uh, image on there, potentially. I've seen one of the firmware uh, updates where um, I think you can change your own image, but that's not something I've... Uh, experimented with yet but that's one for the future so let's look at menu uh, 35 so menu 35 shows how the battery is uh, um, displayed so you can either have it a percentage you can see that showing a hundred percent and the little bar um, you can have no battery displayed or you can have the voltage displayed so let's select that uh, and now you can see we're getting the little bar with the increments but also it shows the uh, the battery voltage uh, rather than actual percentage but I quite like having the percentage so we're going to change back to uh, percent on there again menu 36 is your your backlight timeout so for the video I've got this set for for two minutes so the backlight stays on while I'm demonstrating this to you but we can um, we can have the backlight um, off altogether we can have it on permanently or we can have it on for anything from four minutes uh, down to uh, about five seconds so uh, you can select that wherever you want it to like so I've currently got that set on two minutes so menu 37 then that selects what happens to the backlight after it's gone off so I've got it set for to go off after two minutes but if I select the backlight um, minimum brightness after two minutes it will go off altogether, or we can have it so it's just dim, so you can have it on one, it's not very easy to see on the video there. 
but as I start to increase it, you'll see you can have it uh, anything between one and and ten. So you, you or sorry, one and nine, which is your uh, your backlight brightness. But to save the battery, I've got it so it goes off altogether after uh, after a couple of minutes. Uh, your backlight maximum uh, that does go between ten and uh, and zero, so we can take it right down. Oh, sorry, ten and one that one goes to. So uh, again, I've got it on there brighter setting to make it easier to see for the video. Menu 39 then, so that's your uh, uh, backlight activation, so you can have the backlight coming on when you transmit, um, or when you receive, or um, or just when you receive, or just when you transmit, or you can have the backlight off altogether. They're the, uh, the options in there but I have it on so that if it receives a signal the backlight comes on likewise if I push the PTT the backlight will automatically come on menu 40 is the really annoying beep on the keypad which I always have switched off but just for the benefit of the video we'll switch that to on and then um, we'll exit that And you'll see that the, uh, the horrible, annoying beep has come back to life. So I'm going to go back into the menu. And then we're going to set that to, to off. Menu 41 is the uh, the Roger beep. So we can have, either have that switched off. Again, I'm not a fan of the Roger beep, especially on the, on ham radio. Um, there's different options there. You've got your Roger, you've got your MC, MDC, or you can have it off. We will do a little test just to see uh, what they sound like. So I'll put the Roger beep on and we'll go to a clear frequency. Mike 7, Foxtrot Brimeo Sierra test. So that was the Roger beep. If we change it to the MDC, whatever that one is, press menu, press exit. Mike 7, Foxtrot Romeo Sierra test only. And that was the other one. So menu 42 is the STE or squelch tail eliminator. So what that's supposed to do is eliminate the uh, the squelch at the end of a transmission when you let go of the PTT. But uh, I haven't really noticed too much difference. I've tried it with both on and off and both on, uh, on transmit and on receive. But uh, we'll leave it switched on. But uh, like I say, I haven't really noticed too much difference whether it's on or off. Menu 43 is the repeat uh, squelch tail eliminator for repeaters. Again, we can uh, you can uh, switch that on or you can uh, you can switch that off. And there's different options on there that you can have that on for the amount of uh, seconds it holds it for or milliseconds that it holds it for. So menu 44 is your one key call channel. So uh, if you've got a favorite channel that you want to uh, uh, set that you can use your call button for, which is channel nine or button nine on here. You can set that to go to a, a certain channel. Uh, if we set that for uh, one four five five hundred call and frequency, we can select that. Uh, and now, if I exit, um, and we're on, uh, you see, we're on one four five four seven five on the second VFO. If I press the uh, nine button, it takes us straight to. Um, that, that uh, direct call channel if you want to do that. So menus 45 right up to 50 is all to do with DTMF or dual tone multi-frequency modes. So uh, the first one is the radio's uh, ID. Again, it can't be changed. Um, let's go into uh, menu 46. Uh, that one is apparently the, uh, the up code. So that's the tone that's sent uh, at the beginning of the transmission. Um, menu 47 is the uh, code that's sent at the end of the transmission. Again, we can't change these for some reason in here. Um, menu 48 is the push to talk ID. You can switch that off, or you can send your up code or your down code from the previous two uh, menus, or both the up and down codes. Um, I have no idea what uh, what that does, uh, but somebody might well know what. Uh, the DTMF settings are all about in here. If you do, stick a comment in the uh, comments down below. 49 is the uh, DTMF side tone switch, which lets you hear transmitted tones in the radio speaker. Uh, we can have that on or we can have that off. 
Menu 50 is uh, where you select what you want the DTMF response to be. So you can either have the radio do nothing when it receives a DTMF, or you can have it ring, um, you can have it automatically reply, or you can have it do both, so it'll ring and reply if, uh, if you want to set that up. 51 is the DTMF auto reset time. Uh, 52 is the uh, DTMF preload time. 53 enables the DTMF decoder, so you can switch that on or off. Uh, 54 is uh, your list of uh, DTMF contacts if you've set that up. Uh, 55 displays the DTMF codes received by the radio in the middle of the screen. Menu 56 is the AM fix, so you can switch the, uh, um, the fixed AM in the firmware on or off there. I'm not sure why you'd want to switch it off, but um, Obviously, I've got my one uh, switched on, but you can switch the AM fix off if you wish to. Menu 57 is your uh, voice, a voice activated transmission. So I've obviously got that switched off, but you can switch the uh, um, voice activation on. And there's uh, various levels, 1 to 10, of uh, where it would uh, activate. Menu 58 shows the uh, battery voltage or percentage. So um, say it's showing both there. Uh, all it does is just show that it doesn't allow you to uh, to actually physically change anything. We saw further back uh, there is options to uh, change how it's displayed, but it's just in the menu there shows you what the current voltage and uh, percentage is. So menu 59 then, uh, that sets the receive mode, so it sets uh, what the upper and lower frequencies are doing basically on the uh, on the two VFOs. So I've got this on uh, the main one is uh, transmit and receive, and the secondary um, VFO will be receive only. So if I if I come out of here, you'll see at the moment if a signal comes up on S20 or a signal comes through on the uh, local repeater, the squelch will open and we should be able to hear uh, either transmission. Uh, but if I press the push to talk, I'll only transmit on the uh, the one that I've selected. If I go back to the uh, menu 59, then we can change that so we can have it on main only so it'll only receive and transmit on the uh, the VFO that I'm listening to or I've got it set to. Um, you can have uh, dual RX respond so that if uh, if I'm listening on uh, the second BFO but something comes up on the first one uh, when I push the push to talk it'll automatically lock on to that and uh, we can do it that way. I don't don't like that I don't like the uh, not quite knowing where my signals going so um, I would uh, select probably the uh, either main only or dual RX and respond. You can have it on crossband as well. So, um, for example, if you wanted to listen on one frequency and transmit on another, you can um, you can select it to do that. So you can be listening on um, a different uh, simplex frequency and transmitting on another simplex frequency. If that makes sense, you wouldn't want to do it with the repeater, but. Um, uh, there is an option in there to uh, do that, but we're going to set that back to uh, um, the main one only. We'll have it on main only for the time being. And then finally, menu 60 is your uh, is your squelch control. I have that set on one. Obviously, if you have that set too high, it's going to uh, reduce the uh, sensitivity of the radio and you won't actually receive anything. And if you've got it set on probably on zero or one, um, the squelch is open. So I'll put it on zero. There you go, and you can hear the... Uh, yeah, the squelch is open there, but one seems to be uh, uh, enough for my current location anyway, just to uh, uh, just to, to um, quieten the noise. So that is all the uh, basic 60 menus quickly, uh, uh, hopefully demonstrated. There is a hidden menu, so if we switch it off and uh, we press the PTT and uh, side button one, and then rotate, it'll say release all keys. Uh, and you can now see that we've got menus uh, 1 of 69. So if we're going to scroll up, let's go up to menu 61. Uh, 61 is uh, where you can select um, which band you want to transmit on. So I've got it set personally uh, so it will transmit on the uh, GB handband. So it will transmit anywhere between 144 and 148 megahertz and 430 and 440. So I can still receive uh, things like CB channels and that, that I've got programmed in there. Uh, it just won't let me physically try and transmit on those because uh, like I said in the previous video, uh, if you try and transmit on uh, 
frequencies that radio is not designed for. Um, it's going to splatter all over the band and we could be causing all sorts of problems on uh, uh, on important parts of the spectrum like the air band, for example, and, and causing chaos. So um, we've got it set for, uh, for hand bands, but like I say, you can um, go in and uh, select different things. So you've got your GB ham, uh, is European, uh, FCC, uh, you've got the radio's default, so if you're using it as a uh, uh, a business radio or any other use, you've got the uh, the option for it to transmit in its um, designed uh, frequencies between 137 and 174, uh, right up to 400 to 470. You can unlock all um, for experimental purposes, like I said, I did show that in the previous video, but uh, it's highly recommended that you don't really transmit out of... Uh, uh, the bands that the radio is designed for. It's not very efficient and like I said it's going to cause all sorts of problems. Uh, and you can disable it all. So if you want to just use this as a scanner uh, and you're worried it might be transmitting by mistake by catching the PTT, it is possible just to, uh, to totally make this into a little scanner for yourself and you can disable all the uh, um, all the frequencies uh, should you wish. So menu 62, um, you can switch on and off the uh, transmit in the 200 megahertz band 63 does the 350 megahertz band. Uh, 64 does your uh, uh, enables TX within the 500 megahertz band, and 65 does uh, the 350 megahertz band. 66 enables the uh, scrambler function. Uh, should you wish to use that, uh, I'm going to have that switched off because I don't need to use the uh, uh, the scrambler. 67 is the battery calibration, uh, measures the voltage on the back of the radio and adjusts the value in the menu accordingly. Menu 68 is uh, for selecting the battery types. If you've got a 1600 milliamp hour battery, obviously have it set on 1600. If you're using a 220 uh, milliamp hour battery, then set it on uh, 220. The reason for that is obviously the uh, the discharge rate is going to be different on uh, on different batteries so this just allows the radio to calculate the uh, the percentage of uh, uh, battery that's left uh, accordingly and finally uh, menu 69 is uh, where you can reset either your VFO or you can uh, reset the radio settings uh, completely back to uh, um, basically a factory reset so hopefully this has been another helpful video don't forget to uh, hit the like button comment if you've got any comments and uh, hit that subscribe for more. See you next time, 7-3.